What's going on guys? There are a couple methodologies to remove a fretboard. Wanted to share them with you here on this 2550 Restore. I had a significant problem getting this fretboard up where it was cracked. Since the neck was cracked up here, it actually cracked the fretboard in a couple different places. So as I removed it, I realized I had to replace it regardless. Even if I had that other chunk, I could tell it was cracked. So that was a lesson learned in some of the restore work I've done is if you think there's a crack, most likely there's a crack in a couple of spots. So remember that when you're fixing up guitars that if you see a crack here, there may also be a crack up here. So on this, there's a couple different methodologies. One is a heating blanket on that 2008 Les Paul I restored. I left this on for about 20 minutes, half hour, loosened up the glue, came back with a putty knife, no problem. On the 1953 Les Paul, I took this thin piece of metal, put a little bit of a beveled edge on it, came back with some soldering irons, clamped them down on each side, and then this just slowly broke the hide glue that was holding this together. Worked really simple. I had some trouble breaking the seam at the beginning, but I took a razor blade, clamped the soldering iron to the razor blade, and that heated up just enough to get that lip broke. And then once that broke, I could just move to this larger tool. And for a custom tool, I should probably make these. With this one, the Norlin era Les Pauls use a really high bond, sort of like a PVA glue. And as I went through trying to do my sort of tried and true methodology of the soldering irons on a piece of metal, get under there and just slowly lift. The soldering irons get pretty hot. They're high wattage soldering irons. And that has done a lot of uh, great work for me on some other guitars that I haven't filmed. So I thought that would be the way. I've got the two soldering irons clipped on and I'm just trying to get underneath to break that seam. And I must have spent 40 minutes trying to get underneath the seams. Every time I'd get under a little bit of the seam, since the fretboard was cracked, it would pop up. And then I go to the next one and pop up. So it was just kind of a complete mess. So since that wasn't working, I came back with a spatula and my uh, propane torch, heated this up and came back from this side. And I did a little bit of burn work here on the side. I got underneath it since there wasn't glue uh, where the truss rod cavity is and the tenon isn't the long tenon. So I got underneath there, the, they didn't put enough glue there and was able to just get this under and run it through and that's how I popped off the fretboard by heating this up. That wasn't ideal, uh, but since the fretboard was completely trashed, kind of worked out because the fretboard was cracked and I needed to replace it anyway. I'm gonna try a heat knife next time and use that on the spatula. Maybe I can control the heat a little better so I don't burn. I've got to sand some of this out. This neck is really a mess. The glue is still on here from after pulling it off. It is really messy. I mean, this is like the most heavy duty glue I've seen in a while. So it's gonna be a little bit of work to get this off. But a lot of work went into this to get the fretboard off. Way more time and effort than what I was thinking. So what I thought would take 45 minutes ended up almost taking three hours. Uh, I think it was last week I was playing with this, so. So here we're gonna pull the binding off and a little bit of chunk comes off, which is always awesome. The glue seeped down into a grain line, and that was it. We're gonna get Grandpa's pocket knife out here and see if we can pop one of the edges just slightly. That didn't work. So here we've got the razor blade and the soldering iron. This worked really well on the 53, but then I realized I couldn't get under because there's a little bit of fretboard. So I sawed off a little bit of the piece, and then I'm using my chisel here to try and get under and this is when I realized the fretboard was cracked pretty good. I've got the piece of metal, two soldering irons. These are both uh, 40 watt guns, I think. So that thing gets pretty warm. You'll see me pull out a glove here to try and help. But I can't get under it at all. That glue isn't budging. So I've got the chisel trying to pop it a little bit more. And we'll go back to the razor blade and the soldering iron, it's just not doing it. I can't even get that little edge to come up, which I was really surprised by. 
So that blade is really hot at this point, and I've got a vice grip. I'm still trying to get anything to come out with that edge, and I get a little bit in here, ever so slightly, tapping it in, letting it sit, heat up more, sit, heat up, sit, heat up. And then I decide to pull out the heating blanket and the soldering iron. Can't get any of this to move. So we got my glove, because now everything's really hot. Chisel. And this is when I learned that the um, fretboard is just cracked. You can see how much work I'm putting into this here. A little bit under. Clamp down the guitar because it's just moving. So within 40 minutes here I've got just a little bit of movement. I'm tapping, tapping, tapping. And that's where it's cracked. So I'll come back with the saw, cut underneath it just a little bit to try and pull under it again. Clean it out with the chisel. The ebony that's left. The frets are non-existent at this point. There's really nothing left on the fretboard. This thing has been worn pretty hard. Tap to get this in. And here I think I'm making some progress and I'm not. Again, we'll come back with the heat gun or the heat blanket. Still not moving. Everything's smoking a little bit because that heat blanket's pretty hot now. So I decide to wrap the headstock with uh, an old shirt, put a piece of wood out of, over it, and then put the heat blanket on and really crank it up. See if I can actually get this to move. And what I realize is that the back side then, the bottom of the fretboard with the razor blade is doing it. So now we're going to get the spatula and the propane torch and lay it under the back side of the fretboard and this really pops it. You can see I, I burnt the finish there a little bit but this was the only thing that was pulling this fretboard out and then once I got it started it just started going which I didn't fully understand so I put the chisel back and then heated up the spatula a couple of times put the heat bank blanket back on and this starts to work. So if I had to do it over, I probably would have left the heat blanket on for 25 minutes to begin with. And then came back and tried to lift it. But the fretboard was cracked anyway, so either way I got it off. Tapping the chisel and everything's starting to come up then at this point. A pipe wrench is the weight to hold it down. Heat that spatula up a little bit more. You can see I'm just breaking the seam. And here we go the whole way through. What a mess. Next step is to pick out the truss rod. I'm gonna do that with my hot knife. I'm gonna pull that strip of mahogany out and then I'm not sure what truss rod I'll put back in here. I might actually use one of the Stumac dual action truss rods. Uh, we'll see, I don't know how authentic I'll keep this. I'll talk to the owner, but that's what's coming next. So if you like guitar related content, please comment, like, subscribe and click that bell. We will see you guys in the next video.